pirate suckers! I say the budgets are yours if you can pirate! Can you dig it? Can you dig it? When most people think a rock star, they think GTA. You can't help it. Hell, these days, when rock star thinks a rock star, they think a GTA. And for good reason. There's no game that more accurately portrays hiring a hooker. <clears throat> Says an anonymous source close to Fleek News, it's their old squeeze. Their dearly beloved. Hell, I'll say it, their sugar mama. And oh, these days, they have eyes for no other. But back in the BSC times, they had a fucking gaggle of gumas. While GTA was at home with the family, guess who's all around town sticking their meatballs where they don't belong? Putting their ragu in the wrong dish. That one and done. That hit it and quit it. That smash and dash. That shoot and scoot. The toolbox. Nut screw and fucking boat. Ow! They were dropping loads like fucking Pearl Harbor. Kids popping up all around town looking just like GTA, and there was no sign of stopping until this prick Todd Howard made horse armor. As GTA was brought up a fresh kid on the home front, they knew this was the seed to some real fucking money. Before you knew it, GTA went from housewife to sugar mama off those sweet shark cards. And now she calls the shots, Rockstar keeps it tucked in his pants, and I get to look forward to the next three GTA 6s. When all I wanted was ping pong too, damn it. But hey, it's just the way it is. I'm not here to bust new Rockstar's phantom balls about it. I'm here to remember the funnest of their side pieces, the... Damn it, I almost banged her. I fucking macaroni grill. Warriors is Rockstar's biggest flex because all the way back in 2005 they showed us they were perfectly capable of making a deep, satisfying melee combat system and yet still continue to have the shittiest melee combat in every GTA game for the next 20 years. And no, I didn't forget about GTA 4. Saints Row 2 still clears. Gabba, go fuck yourself. Whereas Prototype was a peek into what New York City is like today, the Warriors is a peek into what it was like back in the 70s. A time when kids weren't sitting around inside on their iPads, am I right? That's one for the moms out there. That's for the parents right there. No, back in the good old days, they were outside doing blow, beating up clowns, and listening to some AM gold. If you're in love with a beautiful woman, you better watch your friends. You better watch your friends. You better watch your friends. This game is all about doing booger sugar so you can brawl and brawling in big old mosh pits until you need more booger sugar to make you forget about your three broken ribs. With a healthy side of robbing stores, car radios, and any variety of hobos. Sorry, homeless man. Unhoused? Man of no roof? Call him whatever you want. I'm taking that $2. And if I can't get $20 by the time I get to my flash dealer, I give you one guess at who's next. It's not an AA meeting because I am unwell. The brawler genre may have gone away with the pager, but god damn it, if we can make another Roadhouse movie, then we can bring back the brawler. Ma, we've had enough of the pissing and moaning genre. It's time to bring back the beating the piss out of genre so I could sprout me a third ball. That would be a miracle, and miracles are the way things ought to be. Can you dig it? <laughs> First up, I want to talk about the AI. Today, AI has gotten so advanced that it can trace fraud, crash cars, or generate AI images of Taylor Swift getting pounded by Big Bird, but it's important that we remember that we couldn't get to this pinnacle of achievement without the foundation laid by the brain-rotted AI in this game. Trust me, bro, this was a building block to laying pipe. Let me be clear, they're not bad, they're just confused. Often. It's like they were pre-programmed to have CTE from the years of doing coke and getting hit in the head by a fucking oven. Or in, or, or in simpler terms, they just won't stop leaping at me. They feel like real bonafide human dumbasses. <laughs> Next, we'll take a glance at the story. If you know the movie, this is a fantastic adaption that's gonna give you three things you've always wanted. Number one, you get to play out the beatdown of this cuck. Number two, a faithful prequel to the movie that explains how the Warriors was formed and how they got a seat at the table. And number three, you get to see Cleon alive for longer than five fucking minutes out! And as it would turn out, Cleon's the coolest dude in the crew. Open your eyes, motherfucker. You ain't nothing but asses. <laughs> In an age where dumbasses hire dipshits to help them kill the all-time bros of cinema, it's quaint looking back upon the simpler times where people liked what they worked on. Fuck! Now, if you don't know the movie, the Warriors are an up-and-coming group of young entrepreneurs looking to fund their startup by beating up orphans. And mimes. And others. Listen, I'm not gonna spoil all of it. The movie just came out. All you really need to know is, is that it's the perfect story that exists to set up more gang violence than an average week 
weekend in Chicago, no matter how ridiculous the cactus belly. Just to give you a sample, in one flashback mission, you get to beat up an entire neighborhood full of poppers because you needed a size 8 pimp hat. It's a genius retelling of the three little bears with the most charismatic roundhouse I've ever seen. Shut the fuck up, bitch! <laughs> But by far, the best gift that it gives is that it takes me to a big budget jiggle joint so I can meet some fellow entrepreneurs. However, I don't do this for the view. I do this so I can hear this goofy ass noise on repeat. This side hoe deserve more love, damn it! She's perfect! Speaking of perfect, let's get into the gameplay. No brawler before or since has captured the sheer clusterfuck of these fights. There are so many people that I can throw a dude and he'll knock out two dudes before he hits the ground. There are so many people I can throw a punch at a guy, and by the time it lands, it's hitting two guys. I'll be trading blows with a bro that a hoe will catch an accidental equal right palm strike. Now I'm getting locked up for assault in Boca. Bada bing! And as long as we're confessing, let's remember this one as an accident too. I was just doing my job. But it's not merely the quantity, it's also the unpredictability. I'm getting beat on by four cops, and this fucker comes flying out of nowhere. This guy comes flying at me, but I go diving under at the same time. I get cartwheeled, my teammate immediately tackles, and now I'm beating up my teammate. The war is over, but there's so much adrenaline's in my blood that I can't stop. I'm like a Vietnam vet having a flare-up at a Panda Express. It's a mosh pit of confusion in the most glorious way possible. Now imagine if Rockstar came back and made moshes like this on a Kingsman game. Now think of what that mid credit scene would be. Two words. Absolutely electric. If you know, you know. If you don't know, I can't tell you right now. The line's a tap to listen to us, Donnie. Rockstar, when your sugar mama runs dry, come find me. I've been thinking thoughts. Speaking of thoughts, let's get into my thoughts on the move set. This game plays like an early version of Sleeping Dogs. She doesn't quite have the same flow. Yeah, the years have worn on her a little bit, but you can still bounce a head off a wall. You can hit him with the Kool-Aid. You can use a brick, use a bottle, use a knife, use a sledgehammer, grab a pimp hat, lose a pimp hat, heavy attack, charge, suplex, double team, ground and pound, toss him off of a roof, into a roller coaster, into roof. Bobby, 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 Bobby. Turn on the rage mode and handstand into cracking a rib or become a goddamn helicopter. How you hit and how you take down depends on the character you play as, but no matter who you play as, you're gonna whoop some ass. It may not have the pomp and circumstance of a newer brawler like Sleeping Dog, but in defense of the game, it started development back in 2002. The Wright brothers flew and invented the first plane that year. That was eons ago. All right, let's move on to the extraterrestrial activities. This is a rock star game, so henceforth, its motto is ABC. All Always be committing crimes. Nowadays, all you crazy kids have your Yakuza Zero with your karaoke, your RC cars, your bowling, your, uh, let's just get this installed, let's just get this installed. But here in America, we do things differently. Our side activities are beating men on no roof until they get one. <laughs> a magician never shares his tricks, but remember how we cleaned up the streets before Winnie the Pooh came through? Well, I like a fucking Zam! And I already mentioned the other Tom Polaris side activities such as they were, but I didn't mention tagging buildings. When I nail one of these without missing a beat, oh, uh -huh. feels as good as watching one of those perfectly cut videos you see in the bottom half of a TikTok while a World War II veteran breaks down what it's like to burn a man alive with a flamethrower. But on the other hand, when some fella keeps bumping me while I'm trying to express myself, he makes me want to express my wee through my fucking TV. Oh, there were some other odd jobs too, but I'd rather talk about the bosses. This time it's just one word. Legendary. Move aside, Elden Ring. Cancel your release, Ricerone. This game has a boss whose sole move is just to kick you in the nuts over and over and over again. Then in between the ball bustings, he hides in these shallow, well-lit corners where I can very obviously see him. And if you think the greatness stops there, you're wrong. Because the ethereal presence of this boss is gotta be... Let me think about it. A close second place. Because this man conjures a portal to Home Depot and starts pulling out refrigerators, shitters, ovens, and yeets them at you for the entire second phase while you're trying to fight his brother. Some people may get angry at this, uh, but I struggle to get angry when the object hitting me is a porcelain throne. This man is an aisle nine menace. And an honorary mention to Big Mo, the granddaddy pimp, because if you can knock off his head, you can put it on and then boogie down. Oh, Name one Dark Souls boss that makes you boogie down. You can't. Because 
because they don't. They make you break down. And as the cherry on top of this game, you have the rumble mode. Think of the rumble mode as the side piece to the side piece. Rumble mode is a collection of game modes that you unlock by successfully playing the main story in the flashbacks. Even better though, you get to play as any gang you want. You want to play as the boppers doing a lethal royal rumble on a rooftop? You want to play king of the hill as one of the extras from the movie? You want to race in a wheelchair? You want to die in 60 seconds or less on survival? The possibilities are endless. They just couldn't stop themselves. Shit, the only one I haven't played is Have Mercy, and that's because it requires a friend, and all, and all my friends were busy. Not existing. In fact, there are so many, I forgot to mention the Double Dragon-inspired minigame that you unlock after beating all the flashbacks. Anyways, I gotta go drain the Buka Teeny Weenie. What are we doing here? Go celebrate March Madness with the very best of Rockstar side pieces, the <laughs> Many thanks to the made men for funding this endeavor as it were. And an extra huge thanks to all the pimperers for helping me sort out that thing. You know the thing. Now pardon me. I have a date with... Look at how they've massacred my boy.